Hey guys, my name is Kay Bella and I am the owner and coach of Kay Bella Coaching and I'm also a psychotherapist. Today I wanted to share a bit more about what I eat in a day. I'm going to share three common misconceptions when it comes to um, eating healthy and losing weight and also like a whole foods plant-based diet. I'm going to share how to set up your meal plan for weight loss success and then I'm going to share what I eat over the course of the day because I feel like if I just tell you what I eat in a day, sometimes we take notes and we're like, oh, that's exactly how I have to do it. And I wanna share that this is what works for me and this is what I found in general for the people that I coach as well. So you're getting not only my perspective but also a way that you can do it for yourself. Okay, so let's dive in. dive into the misconceptions. First off, it doesn't have to be complicated. I think in looking at the media and looking at all these different fads that we have going around nowadays, it's like, oh, this is the best diet. This is the best plan. And really, it doesn't have to be that complicated. When you're eating a whole foods plant-based diet, it's just very simple. Um, and I think we try to make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So sticking to whole veggies, whole fruits, um, uh, whole grains and healthy fats, things like that. Um, I would say the only thing that you really need to think about is having majority veggies, a little bit less of the fruit because that's going to have natural sugars and fibers that your body needs to process well. Um, and then you're also going to have whole grains, which again, help to give you fuel and help, help your body to have more energy. Also give you more fiber and help your body to stay strong and um, regular and the the healthy fats are going to help as well with um, with brain function and actually a lot of other areas of your body so um, so it doesn't have to be complicated just try to keep it as simple as possible um, it doesn't have to second misconception is that it doesn't have to be exact or food restrictive I think in today's day and age we've gotten really preoccupied with like food tracking and um, counting calories and while though while food tracking and like writing down your meals each day that part can be beneficial we really don't need to like microscopically stare at the um, the calorie intake when we're looking at a whole foods plant-based diet because it's actually very fluid and what you'll be feeding and fueling your body with will take a lot of that um, Yes, excess energy <laughs> of focusing on like nitpicking at your diet. We don't, we, we just don't need to do all that when you're doing this kind of style. Um, so take all of that off the table. Don't worry about those kind of things when you're doing a whole foods plant based diet. Um, it also, it does not have to be bland or lack flavor um, or taste strange. So people think, oh, this is, this is not what. I typically eat, sorry my laptop went to sleep, um, this is not what I typically eat and so you know it's going to be bland, it's not going to have any flavor, I'm just going to have to eat salads all the time, <sighs> like I'm not a huge salad fan to be honest and especially when it's like winter time or it's a colder season, those are typically nice in the summer when there's all these like fresh fruits and veggies and stuff around to use. Um, nonetheless, you it does not, your meals do not have to be flavorless and like lack enjoyment like I use the same seasonings that I used on seafood I love my Old Bay originally from Maryland so here so um, so it's definitely something that I loved and um, any chicken seasoning steak seasonings those actually you can really just put those on veggies and you'll find the same flavor and actually more robust flavors because the veggies themselves have a lot of that um, that delicious flavor to them especially when you're getting stuff that's of good quality. So it does not have to be bland. It doesn't have to lack flavor. I know that's a lot of what we conceive in today's day and age because you go to a restaurant or something and they're like, steamed broccoli, that's all we have for veggies. Oh, you want something else? We have like sliced carrots and that's it. That was what I grew up 
the leaving was veggies and was like, oh, how could you be vegan and just eat that all the time? Like, that's awful. But that's not the case at all. As you're going to find from my meal plan today, there's a wide variety of veggies. There's a wide variety of foods that can taste the, even better than what you've had growing up or than what you've experienced of veggies so far. So take that off the table. Don't even worry about it being bland or lacking flavor. Okay, so those are the misconceptions. We got those out of the way. So how to set up your own meal plan for weight loss success. First, I want you to start adding one to two veggies um, or recipes a week to what you already know. Now, this can, it can be hard when we first start because we're like, oh, I have to overhaul all of my meals and my whole lifestyle. Um, to be part of this and I have a job and I have kids and I have family and I just how do you take all this on all at once slow your roll chill out it doesn't have to be a dramatic exodus of everything in your life and just throw you into a complete upheaval some of you may be ready for that and you're like I just want to get it one and done like I just need it taken care of right now and that's possible as well but please understand, it doesn't have to be that way. This is something that you can build over time. So having a meatless Monday or having, um, you know, no meat after noon or something like that. And trying to slowly progress yourself, adding a new recipe, adding a new veggie each week so that you start to like those flavors and try those different things out. So it can be a more gradual process. So... I would definitely suggest that for setting up your own meal plan. Um, work with what you know. This is the second one. Work with what you know and what you love and build from there. So if you love barbecue chicken, find something else to put that barbecue sauce on that tastes absolutely delicious. So I love to put it on a lot of different kinds of veggies and stuff. I'll make some some grilled veggies, some grilled eggplant or something like that, and then I'll put the barbecue sauce on that. Um, having it on potatoes or different things that I put in, the, th the same kind of things that you would have on a grill in the summer with that barbecue. So using that kind of um, system as well, it's another one, you know, even things like curry or hibachi, typically you would have the meats with that. <coughs> Sorry. Hmm. Um, but actually just focus on putting those flavors onto the veggies instead. Um, so working with what you already know and love is going to be huge for helping you to transition smoothly because you don't really miss the flavors. You don't miss the, um, the bonding with the family over certain meals or the memories that you had connected to those foods. So sometimes we go to food for comfort. You wouldn't even have to separate yourself from those kind of recipes and that good food by doing these simple switches, okay? So just think of recipes that you love and then try to find ways to make healthier versions of them and, um, and build from there, okay? Switch out the carb of the pasta for some different veggies or something like that. So... Um, work with what you know and love and build from there. So that's that second point. Ugh, went to sleep on me again. Okay. Don't be shy to try new things. This is the third one. Um, because they won't bite, I promise. So sometimes we get to and we're like, oh, I don't know if I want to try something that I don't know if I'll like or not. Okay. So have something that's a backup, like in the freezer. So make, for instance, I love doing like a crock pot chili or something and then I'll freeze bags of it, okay? So then you have meals available. If you don't like what you cook, unfreeze it and have that for dinner instead. And also it, it's an experiment. It's fun to try new things and experiment with different things. If you're not sure if you'll like it, try it as a small side. Don't buy a huge bag of it first off, like make sure you like it first and experiment a little bit with it. Try it a couple new ways. Brussels sprouts was a huge one for me. Ugh, I thought they were the weirdest thing and I was like, don't touch me. I don't want Brussels sprouts. So I, <laughs> I bought a bag of them, tried them in a couple of different recipes and found one that I really loved. Um, the other ones didn't work out so much and my husband, the garbage can, had to eat it. Um, but he didn't mind too much. But having something like that where you can you can play around with it, try it in a couple new ways, 
and see how you like it and that'll help a lot in making it fun, making it curious, and, a, and an experimentation and an experiment where you can test it out and see if you like it. Um, and then the fourth thing is just allow it to be fun and creative like I kind of already said. So try to just enjoy the process. It doesn't have to be something that is like, oh, I have to eat healthy tonight. Make it fun, make it flavorful, like I said, make it interesting and I uh, love that process. So what do I eat over the course of the day? So typically for breakfast, I have something like oatmeal or a veggie medley, but instead of just your average oatmeal with like just oats and brown sugar and milk or something like that, we have oatmeal that has maple syrup, usually about a tablespoon of it. It has pepitas or these little green seeds. It has chia seeds, hemp seeds, banana, and raisins is our typical combination. Oh, and pecans. And that allows us to have a lot of like fun variety um, and gets us a lot of different kinds of seeds and nuts and things. So depending on what we have in the pantry, <clears throat> we'll throw different things in there and, um, and try out different combinations, but that's one that we've solidly gone to. And that's Typically, I don't, I don't usually have that every morning because, like I said, I want my meals to be really dominant with the, the veggie content. So we also, on most mornings, have some kind of veggie medley with like sweet bell peppers, um, black beans or some kind of beans, um, onions, garlic, uh, potatoes, um, even, I mean, he likes to throw in anything, so he throws in like broccoli and cauliflower and stuff, which to me is a little quirky for breakfast, but to each his own, and it's really good. So we just do kind of, we get like a bunch of different things each week, and we try them out in different combinations. So leeks, um, we've started experimenting more with collard greens, which I'd never done before, um, and kale, so we'll, we'll add in different things and see how we like them. And like I said, because they're veggies, they have such a great flavor together and adding different things, tomatoes, throwing those in there sometimes, um, all of those can make for a really interesting combination. Another one we like is a quinoa breakfast bowl and that has quinoa, kale, tomato, um, garlic, and I think that's pretty much it actually on that one. That's a delicious combination. Um, so if any of these recipes sound good to you, definitely shoot me a message. You're also welcome to follow my Instagram page. I, um, I post in my Instagram story each day and at least once a day I put in a meal of some kind as well as my workout motivation, inspiration, um, and I even do morning motivation talks which you can also see as another playlist on here. Um, but I do those live through Instagram as well. So. Um, if that's something that's of interest to you, definitely check that out. And I'll also, in my story, I post the, the recipe off to the side so that you can actually use the material. <clears throat> so that's a bit of what we do for breakfast. For lunch, we do things like veggie burgers um, with potatoes, carrots, broccoli, green beans, um, even a little bit of vegan cheese sauce. Portobello mushroom tacos is another good combination with sweet peppers, tomatoes, um, red onion, um, you know, anything that you could love on tacos. These portobello mushroom tacos are so great. They are the bomb. And I never heard of them until I was in actually an airport and some, a restaurant that I went to had it as an option. So, so it, it, that's a delicious option. Um, I've also done cauliflower and broccoli seasoned with Cajun or Old Bay. That makes for a good combination when you're like, I really want some seafood, so just throw some Old Bay on there and um, gives it a really good flavor. And then I'll also use the vegan cheese sauce with that um, if I decide to do that for that meal. So lots of different interesting combinations to play around with. And then for dinner, a lot of times we do things like a soup or a curry, hibachi, even pizza. I am such a sucker for pizza. I love vegan pizza. Um, so there are different vegan cheeses out there. You can use your own sauce or make your own sauce. And I'll actually add a lot of like uh, chunky stuff to it. 
So like you can add eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, um, onion and garlic, of course, and make this kind of chunky meat sauce. Not meat sauce, of course, because you don't have your meat. <laughs> chunky sauce. <laughs> kind of looks like meat sauce, though, because it's so chunky. Um, and you can put that on spaghetti squash if you want to not have that processed um, noodle stuff. But there are vegan versions of that as well if that's something that you want. But having it on um, spaghetti squash is so, so good. Very simple to make. Um, and then just put that, that, that sauce on top of it or um, make your own little pizzas that way. So, so lots of different interesting combinations to come up with. Like I said, this doesn't have to be super restrictive. Um, if you have any questions, I would definitely suggest um, getting coaching and you know working with me individually on it, and that way we can come up with a meal plan that you feel good about. Um, because what I find is that a lot of times we like I can share this video with you and this is all advicey. This is like, hey, here's what you do and here are the tips and tricks. But when we actually get in a coaching session, I'm able to say, okay, what's your hang up here? What, what are you dealing with in your life that you need to work with and work around? Um, it doesn't have to be a limitation for you to not have much time. It doesn't have to be a limitation to not have much money. There are ways to make it work for you. And so we'll be able to dive into that in those individual coaching sessions or one of the nutrition classes that I offer. So, um, so yeah, so that is all I have for you guys today. Please let me know if you have any questions. And also you can subscribe to the channel so you're notified when new episodes arrive every Thursday. And then, um, let's see, what else? I'll make sure you click like if this is helpful. That helps me to know that this content is useful to you and I will continue to make videos about it. Um, I've also attached some of my favorite resources. Oh, I'd also encourage you to check out my Pinterest board because that has um, a whole board for vegan recipes and that's actually where a lot of my recipes have come from. So definitely check that out or shoot me a message and I'll send you my modified version. Um, I'd like to coming up pretty soon have a, um, a whole recipe book that you could get from me. So um, I'm looking forward to that, but we'll, we'll save that for another time. Um, yeah, so any resources that you need, just, just connect with me, just shoot me a message and I'll be happy to answer it. I hope you guys have an awesome day here um, in quarantine, at least at the moment, hopefully it ends soon. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.